Hello, this is Mr. Bess. I'm going to show you how to derive the sum and difference formulas for sine and cosine. I've already got a couple things set up here. Uh, we are on the unit circle, so the center is going to be at point O. Point P is at 1, 0, once again, 1 unit over from the origin. Then I have point Q, and point Q is going to represent the line segment OQ, but the angle that we're going to be looking at is angle B. So if you remember from the unit circle earlier, the ordered pair would be your adjacent side, so it's cosine, or it's, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, but remember the hypotenuse has a value of 1 because we are in the unit circle, so therefore the ordered pair is cosine of angle B, comma sine of angle B. I also have another line segment OS, so we have another angle, we're going to be talking about angle A here. All right, and it is, once again, because of what we've already discussed in terms of the unit circle, cosine of A, comma, sine of A. I'm now going to draw in another line segment. I'm now going to draw in another segment from point O to what we're going to call point R. Now, what is R's ordered pair going to be? Well, what we're going to call this is we're going to say that this angle A from here to here, all right, and if we take that angle A in quadrant 2 and subtract this angle A, or this angle B, sorry, in quadrant 1, this new angle will represent angle A minus angle B. So once again, we're saying we're going to take this angle A and subtract this angle B, and that will give us approximately this angle A minus B. We don't know exactly where it's going to fall, but we're going to, that's going to represent that angle where we subtract those two. So therefore, our ordered pair for point R would be cosine of angle A minus B and sine of A minus B. So now we know that the angle POR is congruent to angle, and, and take a look here, because POR is our angle A minus B right here. Well, another angle that is, that is equal to that is if we take angle A, and we subtract this little part right here of angle B, then we will have this angle also as A minus B. And that angle would be QOS. So those two angles are congruent to each other. So once again, point R was created by taking angle A minus angle B and then angle QOS is angle A so once again, this angle A, subtracting this angle B, will create this angle A minus B, which is Q, O, S. Now, if those angles are congruent to each other, then chord RP so that chord right there, RP should be congruent to chord QS. If 
their angles are congruent, then the chord should also be congruent. And if they are congruent, then their measures should be equal. So now that we know the measure of RP is equal to the measure of QS, we're going to use the distance formula between those two points and set them equal to each other. So you can now see I've used the distance formula to find the distance from point RP, or from point R, which is cosine A minus B sine A minus B to point P which is the point one zero in the unit circle. So we know it's the square root of the difference of the x's plus the difference of the y's. So I've taken cosine of A minus B minus one, squared that, sine of A minus B minus zero, and then squared that. That's equal to QS. So Q is cosine B sine B, S is cosine A sine A. So I've done the difference of the axis, cosine A minus cosine B squared plus sine A minus sine B squared. Now we're just going to square both sides and basically just simplify everything, expand everything out and see what happens. All right, when I, I went ahead and expanded everything out. So I took cosine of A minus B, squared it. That's that first part. Then you have... Um, cosine of a minus b times negative 1 and then negative 1 times cosine of a minus b so that's negative 2 cosine of a minus b and then negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1 and once again don't conf get confused with all the stuff that's going on here it's just all we are is taking that binomial and squaring it so same thing on the next one except it's minus 0 so you just have sine squared of a minus b so that's the left side equal to cosine of a squared and then once again minus 2 cosine of a minus b or cosine of a cosine of b plus cosine of b squared or cosine squared of b and then you have plus sine squared of a from this one so expand that out minus 2 sine a sine b plus sine squared of b now we're going to take this and we're going to start simplifying it so look for things that are um, that we can use the identity for. The first thing is cosine squared of a minus b plus sine squared of a minus b is 1. So these two right here by our Pythagorean identity we know is equivalent to 1. So then that means we have 1 plus 1 so that'll be 2 minus 2 cosine of a minus b. So that's the left hand side. The right hand side, we'll see a couple similar things as well. Cosine squared of a plus sine squared of a. So that equals 1. And then cosine squared of b plus sine squared of b is also equal to 1. So we have 1 plus 1 again. So that will be equal to 2. And then we have what's left, which would be minus 2 cosine of a cosine of b and then minus 2 sine A sine B. We can now subtract the 2's from both sides so that will go away and then we'll have negative 2 cosine of A minus B equivalent to negative 2 cosine of a cosine of b minus 2 sine a sine of b and you can see they all have a factor of negative 2 so we're going to divide everything by negative 2 that will then get us cosine of a minus b is equal to cosine of a times cosine of b plus negative 2 divided by negative 2 is positive plus sine of a sine of b so there you go there's the first formula it is the difference formula for cosine 
Now we'll move on to the sum formula for cosine, which we're actually going to use from the one we just have, the one we just created. So by knowing this, we know that cosine of a plus b would be the same thing as cosine of a minus a negative b. So we're actually going to change it back into the difference formula, but just make b negative. And then we will use the formula that we just created. So this would be cosine of a times cosine of negative b plus sine of a times sine of negative b. This is going to use your even and odd properties. Remember that cosine is an even function. So this would be cosine of a times cosine of b because it's even. That negative will not matter when you plug in a positive or a negative. And sine is an odd function. And therefore, the negative gets moved out front, so it actually will be minus sine of A times sine of B. And once again, sine of negative B is equal to negative sine of B. And that's why the negative was moved to the front there. So cosine of alpha or A plus B is equal to cosine of A, cosine of B minus sine A, sine B. So there's your second sum and difference formula and both of them for cosine. And now we will look at sum and difference of sine. So we're going to rewrite sine of theta as cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. And this comes from our complementary angle theorem. And so if this is the case, then sine of alpha plus beta should be equal to cosine of pi over 2 minus that angle of alpha plus beta or a plus b. And if that's the case, then we can rewrite this as cosine of pi over 2 minus a. We're just going to regroup these and then minus b. And remember it's minus b because that negative gets distributed to the A and the B. And so now we've created the difference formula for cosine, so we will use that previous formula that we found. And this will be cosine of pi over 2 minus A times cosine of B plus sine of pi over 2 minus a times sine of b. Cosine of pi over 2 minus a, remember, you can use your um, co-functions and your complementary angle theorem to rewrite that one as sine of a, and then we have cosine of b, plus, and now same thing, sine of pi over 2 minus a, its cofunction for sine is cosine, so that's cosine of A times sine of B. So now we know that sine of A plus B is equal to sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. And now the last one. We will do the same thing we did before. We're going to do the difference of sine, but we'll recreate this as the sum. So we'll do sine of a plus 
negative b and then use the formula that we just created. So sine of a times cosine of negative b plus cosine of a sine of negative b. Once again using our even and odd properties this will be sine of a times cosine because cosine is even so times cosine of b and then sine of negative b that's odd so the negative will go to the front so that will be negative cosine of a sine of b and so now we have found the fourth sum and difference formula. So sine of a minus b is equal to sine a cosine b minus cosine a sine b. So here are the four sum and difference formulas for sine and cosine. If you'd like to challenge yourself, you can look at the tangent formulas and prove those knowing these four formulas as well.